I'm at a client's property in southern Saskatchewan and if you know anything about southern Saskatchewan it's super windy down here. So over the last couple of years that I've been working on this project, I've really observed how wind ha really plays a role and it's a crucial role um, in how well a property does. And what I'm getting at there is that if you don't take it into account and look at the design of your property relative to all of the sectors, but wind being a, a really big one, um, you can have a lot of problems um, and so I'm sitting on the ground right now next to um, a squash plant a honey berry um, and a goji berry so some annuals some perennials and the perennials have been on the ground for a couple of years and they're basically not growing now it could be a lack of water but I suspect that wind is playing a really important role in why these plants are not thriving so one of the things we're doing on the property while we're out here is we are um, putting in a, an irrigation system which is going to provide water to all of these plants um, and we're actually going to move the wind tender plants out of the windward side of the property and we're going to move them into a more sheltered area and we're going to replace these plants with plants that can tolerate the wind a lot better than the ones that are currently here. So take a look at this squash plant um, and how small it is because I'm going to show you another squash plant that was planted at the exact same time this year uh, in a more sheltered area and even the one that's doing better is still um, not thriving because there's still a bit of wind out there so um, in that other location what we're going to do is we're going to create a tall fence and we're going to block some more of the wind there so that eventually the garden will actually um, have a lot of wind protection as well so in this particular area, what we're going to do is replace, replace it with sea buckthorns and buffalo berry um, and a couple of other shrubs that are basically tough as nails. Um, and this is going to start the sheltering process right here. And then to my right, we're actually going to put in a three row shelter belt right around the property. Um, and so in five to ten years from now, um, there will be a, a significant change to how the whole property feels. Wind contributes to uh, moisture loss. It uh, stunts the growth of plants because plants have to accommodate for um, the stress that it places on them. Um, it uh, removes heat from your house. Up to 50% of your heat loss can come as a result of uh, wind in the winter time. And um, it can also increase heat gain. So on, re on really hot days, if you've got lots of wind, that um, heat will actually move through the walls quicker because heat transfer uh, is at least par partially proportional to wind speed as it changes how heat conducts through walls. So if you're doing your own permaculture design right now uh, on your own property it's really important that you consider sectors. Wind is just one of the sectors that we look at. We also look at water flow, um, things like uh, mudslide, avalanche, fire risk, dust, view, smell, um, summer and winter sun uh, angles in the sky, uh, shaded areas, microclimates, all of those things kind of get captured in that sectors portion. And once you get really good at identifying sectors, uh, it really helps you to design your property a lot better because every element that you place onto your property is going to want some or none of those sectors. And so it helps you to decide if you have to put up shields to block the sectors or if you're going to design systems that are going to enhance the sectors. So you might, for example, enhance sun while you reject wind. Um, pretty much every sector you're going to either reject or enhance and that's the decision that you're making as a designer and it really starts to uh, help to delineate where you're going to place things on your property. Um, a lot of times what we find is that people just don't uh, take this into account and they just kind of place things willy-nilly based on maybe aesthetics or uh, their gut feeling. Um, and so you can do a lot better than that, but you have to use some processes and systems. Here you can see a squash that was planted at the exact same time on the same property, but in a more wind protected area. And while this plant is still not thriving as it potentially could, you can see that it's far further along than that other squash, which looks like it barely grew out of its seedling stage. 
as you can see wind makes a big difference and once we get control of the wind on this property it's going to completely be a game changer in terms of the productivity of the property. So if you found that interesting, we actually have our incredible ebook um, that we give to all of our permaculture design students for free in the show notes below. You can download the ebook and read it at your own discretion. Um, it's loaded with tips like this on how to think about permaculture design, whether it's on an acreage, a farm, or even our urban home. Thanks guys, if you found this interesting, hit the, hit the like button and the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.